is mail with tips for truckers over here and this is my 24 foot car trailer that i live in whenever i'm off the road so anyway whenever i was i was home i was either here or there or in this part of the town or that part of town sometimes i like to kayak sometimes i like to go to car shows and the whole idea of buying this was i'd be able to um take it out car shows i could take it across the country whatever i have to do and uh so there's my pickup i'm pulling with it does the job just fine you know it's just a gasser but my car is pretty light so don't have to worry about it anyway i got this uh bar lock instead of the rv handle cheap rv handle that a lot of them have that tend to break but the nice part about that is i use this two inch uh rigid foam insulation to insulate the whole thing so that would have been covering up the handle on the inside anyway so i just put this bar lock here and uh that holds the door nice and shut when i'm inside don't have to worry about anybody breaking in and uh so here's like i said two inch insulation even on the roof the sides and the uh, floor and the whole thing's insulated it'll it'll keep it 60 degrees in here on a hundred degree day believe it or not and it'll stay cool too and so i'm in the process of putting duct tape on all the joints here uh there's my bed as you can see or you can't see yet in this video but you'll see it later on in the video i have it traditionally framed on four by fours on all four corners they're notched for a little bit extra strength and uh, it's all two by six uh traditional frame construction got a piece of plywood there uh two inch insulation and another piece of plywood on top as you can see that's my bed i'm a little light in my power strip here and uh have power 3000 watt power inverter and uh yeah, a smoke detector, carbon monoxide detector, uh, fire extinguisher. That's my window unit AC. I had a really nice 12,000 BTU uh, portable air conditioner, but it was big. It, uh, it used a lot of juice, like 2 kilowatts or more, actually. So even with my 3,000 watt inverter, it was still st struggling to keep up and the wires were getting hot. Sign it up, just trading that in for this, and which is fine because this is plenty uh, for for this trailer and only doesn't even pull 500 watts. But that uh, that portable uh, AC man, it would cool this trailer off in about five minutes, but it it, it wasn't worth it. The juice that it uh, uses. Anyway, these are my uh, solar panels. I just have them portable, uh, 12 gauge wire. Uh, so I can put them. I got enough length here to put them in my truck bed, or I could just uh, unplug them and just use this short wire to plug it in, so I get a little bit less resistance. Here's my portable table I made, just in case I need a table or something. Eat dinner. Got my portable folding chair, camping chair, whatever you want to call it, and. Uh, yeah, so that's basically it on the inside. See, you know, I can sit down, do stuff on my table. Got a little box fan here. And, oh yeah, as you can see, I <clears throat> I use scrap 2x4 to, to frame it. Now, this isn't traditional framing because that would have used a lot of 2x4s and it would have been too heavy. And I'm using rigid insulation anyway, so I just need something to hold the insulation in place, as you can see. It's nice and in place. Fits together pretty tight. Uh, when I shut the door at night or during the day, I'll actually show you. There is, you could barely see any, any light. And this is, showed you how that bar lock closes. I could close it tighter and, and pull it over more. And you won't see any light through there. But I'm going to turn this light off. And that door will actually shut down a little bit farther but i got power cords underneath it and as you can see you can't see 
But uh, anyway, let me turn back on this light so I can show you guys my favorite feature. And that is actually this, uh, I, I called it a door earlier, it kind of spoiled the surprise. But I took a piece of rigid insulation and I sandwiched it in between these two 4x4s. 2x4s actually. And if I don't step on my uh, solar panels, I'll show you. It actually lifts up and slides right there on that track and it goes around the air conditioner and everything. And then I could access my power inverter, my batteries, and my straps to tie down my car. And it really works out perfectly. Just used a little duct tape for that handle there. And then once it's down, pretty much completely sealed. And there is my bed. Kind of cramped. Uh, but it's plenty enough for just me for a night or a couple nights or whatever. And, uh, you know, if I end up living in it permanently, maybe I'll uh, add about six inches or a foot to the roof. And uh, so, yeah, that's basically the tour of the inside, how everything functions and everything. And uh, let's go to the back. All right, guys. So here's the back of the trailer. It's where the, my uh, Cobra goes. Fits in there pretty nicely. I was thinking about a 20 footer, but I got 24 footer, so I got some extra space. 16 foot in total. Uh, and a couple things I really like about this particular trailer is it's got a dovetail, meaning it kind of angles down, starts angling down um, right after the uh, wheel wells there. And, uh, and it's a real, real gradual um, incline here. And one thing that adds to that is the height. So since there's more height, this door is longer and you also got this nice uh, little transition flap here so that uh, you don't scrape your bumper on the on the door when you're pulling it up i really like that touch but as you can see i painted the floors it's got recessed d-rings in here i put these little two by fours to help me aim it in here so i don't hit the bed post there um and the thing that I'm really proud about is my little power wall here I made on the side of the bed. Oh, as you can see, I did traditional framing with rafter hangers and joist hangers and everything. Um, but here's my power wall battery bank. I got two 120 amp hour uh, deep cycle batteries. I got them connected with a uh, four gauge cable. Or oh, that might be two actually. And uh, then I just have the uh, the zero gauge, or is that zero or two, two gauge wires going to my 3,000 watt inverter. Had to upgrade to a 3,000 watt because uh, that 150 that I had down here didn't power my air conditioner. And I also needed to... I had a real big air conditioner in here. I ended up going with just a little window unit to save on juice. But anyway, so this is my solar charge controller. As you guys see, I have uh, solar panels. And um, what happens is uh, I got a little plug that goes underneath the trailer, nice and stealth, so you can't see it. Uh, if I have panels in the truck bed, you literally would have no idea. And uh, I use 12-gauge wire. Um, comes up from underneath the trailer, goes into the charge controller, and I don't have them hooked up right now, otherwise it would be indicating I'm getting some juice. And then they come out of here, and I actually use two wires just to give me a little bit more, uh, a little less resistance there. And I got them going down uh, to the battery. Um, I'll add some fuses a little bit later, still a work in progress. I had a uh, breaker for um, my power inverter, but they sent me an 80 amp. I asked for a 300 amp. And so, yeah, it's, well, it could have been better, but, uh, I mean, it happens. But the other thing is, the other uh, D-rings in the front were way farther up, you know, because this 24-foot trailer, I'm only using back 16 of this to... Um, have my you know have my car in here 
So as you can see, I have two inches of R10 rigid insulation along with uh, plywood floors and everything. And so it covered up the D-rings, obviously, or tie-down. So I added these. It's got an 8 by 8, 8 inch by 8 inch uh, square uh, galvanized, pretty thick steel plate underneath there as a washer. So it doesn't just pull up the plywood. And it's been uh, plenty strong. Got one on each side. Got my little straps here. Got some backup straps. And uh, so, yeah, this is my power wall and battery bank. I think it turned out pretty nice.